Wow, it is hot up in this attic. That is one of the main reasons I'm getting this mini split air conditioning system from Mr. Cole. It's gonna make this home office so much nicer. And not only that, it's, not, it's gonna be able to air condition the space, but it'll also be able to heat this in the winter as well. So you got two things going for you on this one. And I'm gonna go step by step of how to install this. It's a really streamlined installation. You just wanna avoid a couple of mistakes that I'm gonna share with you here in a moment. So let's get to it. All right, so number one, when you're going to purchase this unit, it comes with uh, the head, which is gonna be the main thing that's gonna be in your living space. And it also has the outside condenser unit. Pay attention to what model you're getting and how much line set you have. These, connect, these pipes here have to connect from the condenser unit, wherever you're gonna position that, to this head. And I to totally screwed up this this unit only came with 16 feet so that's really like a one-story area like if you were on the first story of your home you'd be able to install this but otherwise i mean you're going to need a lot a lot longer uh line set so you could obviously you know get the equipment to braze on and, and extend this but in my mind it's just not worth all the effort uh to be able to do so i went ahead and ordered a separate line set for this that is 33 feet and it's going to give me plenty of space so keep that in mind make sure that you're buying the equipment that's going to fit for wherever you're going to locate this and how much room you need to be able to get it down to the condenser that was the other thing the hose that it comes with because this is going to condensate just like all air conditioners do they give you like a six foot line that gets you outside of the house that's about it so i had to order i had to go ahead and purchase some longer uh, condensate line and then also the wire it comes with to connect to your condensing unit is also only 16 feet so we're going to actually junction that we're just going to use some three wire 14 gauge wire and then uh, basically still use this for the main condenser unit because this is uh outdoor rated so I'm, I'm able to just you know bring this straight out to the unit otherwise you'd have to get like an exterior graded romex which can get kind of expensive so that's the first thing. Make sure you buy the right equipment for your project. So let's go ahead and put this unit in. We're going to start with putting the, the, the head in, and then we'll get into the condensate or into the uh, condenser unit. So first thing is, is let's take this back plate off. So you have to just disconnect that. This is just for packaging. You don't need it any longer. But this is going to be your main way that this connects your unit to the wall. Now these lines that are here are meant to basically go straight through your house and then to the outside wall. Uh, if you were trying to tuck this into a space where uh, you, know, you have a wall and you're trying to come down the wall, it's gonna be very, very troublesome to do that. So wherever you locate this, this is gonna to have to somewhat either go straight out the house or go into an attic space like that I have up here and then connect your lines and then bend it down into your space. So all I'm saying is that in a regular two by four wall, it's really gonna be difficult to get this inside of an interior wall just because of the bending of this. So keep that in mind, we're doing this, but we're gonna to have to cut a hole for uh, these condensate lines to go through into our attic space. So you can see how our trusses have these split areas in here. You really can't modify these things. You really shouldn't cut these in any way. So we're gonna try to basically fish that line right through here and then down through our attic space. So if we can keep our line sets coming in here about eight inches above this, that would be ideal. So let's try to figure out where that would need to be. Five inches from their center point here and then we're going to be about two and a quarter inches from the bottom. Okay, so a three and a half inch hole. Okay, so we got a quick connect here. This is just a Romex connector. And we'll get this. We'll be able to make the connections after. So just make sure enough goes in there. Now again, this is kind of designed to go right through the side of your house and then down. But in this scenario, we're just going right into this crawl space. So just be careful with this copper. You don't want to kink it in any way. 
All right, that's all there is to it. Ah, shit. I didn't realize that. That wasn't in there. You son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Come on. Bastard. Well, at least you know, once it's clipped in, it's well clipped in. <laughs> no, I mean, if you had a regular three and a half inch hole that went straight through, there would have been no issues because that pipe would have went straight through, especially if you're going straight outside of the house. It would have had no trouble. But since I was trying to angle it and wedge it between those trusses, because I really don't want to modify the structure here. And, uh, but yeah, as long as you get it to set in there and not, you know, obviously kink, kink any of those piping, you should be in good shape. So now that's, that's set. Now we'll go ahead and connect the rest of the system. How long do you need it? 30? Uh, like 25 at least. Okay, so got some conduit. I'm gonna fish this down into. I'm sure that's the bend down there. Probably about it. Okay, so now we just gotta connect these. We still have a little bit of air in the lines. That's on the actual unit there. Just make sure that you thread this on here and it doesn't cross thread. All right, so these leave these exposed for now because we're going to test them for leaks. We got our condensate line here. It's supposed to be a little bit easier than that. <laughs> Running things through conduit isn't easy. Going around structure on these type of things isn't easy. I mean, all the videos just show everything streamlined, done with no problem. And I mean. A lot of situations it can be that easy, but in this scenario, you know, I didn't want to get one out on an outside wall. The, the, these dormers right here, the roof line comes right along here, and I don't want to have pipes going around my gutter and around the outside of the house. It looks so terrible. And then there was no room, like if I would have done an outside wall like right here, there's no room for it. So like that's the best place for it. It's just a little troublesome to get all the lines to it. And I didn't need to put it in conduit. I mean, I put that three inch conduit down there because it's in the garage space. I'm welding around there. I didn't want, I didn't want to hit anything, puncture those lines. Okay, so now we've got our lines out here. Let's go ahead and connect it to our outside unit. This will be an easy process. Let's go ahead and connect our wires to this. So the wiring on this is the same as whichever you did upstairs. So we had our black wire first. So we got everything matching from what we did upstairs. So just make sure the colors are the same. Black, red, white is the way we did it up there. Line one, line two, ground, everything's connected. So now we can go ahead and put our cover back on. OK, 
Okay, let's get the load. Got all our grounds connected. This is our surge protector connected to our main lugs up here. Oh yeah, right here, line one, line two. Okay, so now all it has to do is to connect the breaker and that'll work. Go ahead and get our 30 amp wire prepped here. Okay, so double 30, have it off right now. And I got it into my ground bus back here. So this is one thing I don't see a lot of people doing, which is to vacuum out the lines. So I have a vacuum sensor here, gives me a reading in microns on how much I'm able to get it down to. Ideally, if you could get this down to a thousand microns, then your line is pretty good. Uh, it just takes a while to get there. I'm at 1500 right now, but essentially it's just a vacuum pump that you connect to the, they have a line side on the low pressure side. They have a little port they connect to, and then that's what they'll do to vacuum the line. Any moisture that you get in, in the line is kind of bad for all types sorts of things. So if you can vacuum it down before you charge the lines, you're gonna be a lot better off. So we're around 1350. I'm gonna wait until we get to about a thousand, and then I'm gonna release the Freon into the system. All right, as long as we get somewhere around a thousand, we're in good shape. So at this point, let's go ahead and just shut off this valve here that I have to my port here. Let's shut off that pump now. And now we'll just release the Freon into the system. So just going to our ports here, just twist them all the way until they're fully open. back on all right so now we have some air conditioning let's go ahead and turn this down to 71 degrees it's awesome lines here now we did just get that down to a thousand microns so it's most likely a good connection but just use a little bit of um, leak detector on these joints before you cover them up so you just spray these and then just see if there's anything bubbling up so just check those lines make sure that nothing's bubbling on there and we should be good in shape okay so just make sure that everything's completely sealed Otherwise, it will drip on you. So make sure everything's well insulated and protected. You may even have to buy a couple pieces of extra foam just because of, of stretching it and stuff can kind of, you know, I was missing this much of it on the copper. But as long as everything's covered, you won't have any sweating problems. All right, so that completes the installation of this mini split system. And as you can hear, it's on right now and it's really quiet. Pretty impressive. So it's really not gonna disturb anything. Now you can put it on turbo, get it uh, the speed of the fan a lot higher. And this will really bring in that cool air. But this little remote's pretty nice. It's got a, you can change the mode to the heat and cooling or just have the fan blowing. So, you know, this is gonna be great for all seasons. Now, I do wanna mention that I did ha have a little bit of a fight with this unit, as you were seeing. And a lot of it had to do with not having that entire hole that this was gonna slide through being completely clear. So that made it a lot more difficult to put this in. Just to ensure wherever you're gonna make this thing go through, that it has a clear path for that whole three and a half inch hole. That'll really make a, a big, huge difference 
uh, with the installation. And then secondly, is that the line sets are not that flexible, you know, so they really, if you're gonna put it through three, three inch conduit like I did, uh, expect to be quite a challenge to get that through there. If you were doing this in another scenario where you're just bringing it down the wall, it would have been a lot, lot quicker. So overall, I would say this is kind of an advanced uh, DIY project just because of the complexity of having to test the lines. You definitely wanna vacuum test it. Uh, being able to bring it down to a thousand microns really ensured that I didn't have any links with it with leaks with any of my connections. I actually couldn't get below 2,500 microns for a while. And it was because I needed to tighten up my connections that were connected to here. So that's just going to ensure that you're not going to lose free on. It's much better just to use a vacuum pump, make sure that everything's leak free and then turn on the free on. If you were able to find a leak later on with the free on, then you got to have somebody recharge it it's going to cost you a bunch of money to do that. So either renting or buying a vacuum pump is definitely ideal because all the moisture in the line and all that extra air, you want to get it out of it before you turn on that Freon. But let's take a quick look outside of the outside unit. I want to show you how quiet it is out there as well. So as you can see, this is the three inch conduit that I brought down. And you can see why I wanted to do that because I didn't want to, this is my workbench where I'm cutting with saws and I didn't want to have that uh, condensate lines exposed in anywhere where I could possibly nick it. So I brought it down and then threw a three inch conduit elbow through the outside of the house. But really, really quiet. You'll feel a lot of warm air coming off of this unit. Uh, biggest thing here was just keeping this 12 inches away from the house or from the garage. So we got 14 inches. And then as you can see, look at all this condensate through my condensate line. It's definitely dripping out of there. So um, yeah, so this is really comes down to the connection points. This is, was fairly straightforward when it came to that. Now this is one thing where you just don't have a lot of flexibility. You know, when you only have this much line set left, you can't really bend it in any way, especially coming out of that conduit. So. This was a little bit of a challenge uh, to work with and my 25 foot line set worked perfectly for where that was located in there. Uh, the other thing to note here is I did use a surge protector. This is really uh, helpful. This is a way to save this device from having any harm. If you know, if a lightning strike or something happens, it's gonna turn off the power before this is an issue. And then this is obviously my disconnect box. So if I need to turn off the power at the, at the actual Location here, I can. Is that an issue for the foundation if it's like dripping there? Or I don't like it because it's 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 what should be point coming out this way, but my pad is not right. So I'm just gonna probably put some kind of slope it away from there. Yeah, I was gonna say slope it. Yeah, yeah, that was a problem from the beginning. So. So thanks, Mr. Cole. Definitely gonna be great to have some air conditioned space in that home office.